Council President Adina Olivares? Present. Councilor Jeff Hensley? Here. Councilor Ray Jackman is absent. Councilor Brian Lewis? Uh, we have a quorum, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Do we have any motion to pay the bills? I'll make a motion to pay the bills. I'll second it. All in favor? Do we need Aye. to be visitors? Huh? Visitors? Oh, right. You missed the visitors. Sorry. Okay, go back. Backwards. <laughs> Reverse. <laughs> okay, visitors. Anthony Marlos, citizen. Chris Bradshaw, citizen. Joseph Parsons, citizen. Vicky Bishop. Yeah. Resident of Soderville. Yeah. Jim Bartley, Park Patrol. Park Patrol. Might as well get yourself a title, right? Yeah. Wait okay. a minute, that's my job. And squirrel feeder. And squirrel feeder. That too. Okay. Now we have most paid bills. We have a seconded. Who is the, the mover and the seconder? Uh, Brian made a motion. Jeff seconded it. All in favor? All in favor. Opposed? Motion carries. Do we have a motion to uh, pay the bills? That was it. Uh, that was it. I mean, make miss, accept the minutes from, from the meeting of uh, whenever it was last time. I make a motion that we accept the meetings from July. July. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now. So, now it's time for public comment. This is the time to speak to the city, council, mayor, or any sub on any subject, including what's on the list of the agenda. Except for public hearings, this time it may be limited to three minutes per person. Does anybody have anything you want to say to the city? Nothing yet. Okay. So, now we go to uh, city recorder report. Everything's fine. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's good. Wow, that was yeah. quick. Let's go. Uh, I have a few uh, city updates. So. Uh, I have noticed in different organizations I've been involved in, there are kind of predictable patterns for when things can happen, and we're in um, what the news media would call the silly season, where there's not a whole lot going on, so you focus on silly things. I'm not focusing on silly things because I'm a civil servant paid by taxes. So um, I'm looking at a few different things, grant research. Um, I'm working on the audit, and then I'm attending conferences. Um, we had a cool meeting a few days ago with Comcast. Um, their government relations person came here and met with me and JD and talked about some interesting things. Comcast has a person that people can contact if uh, something goes wrong. If the regular tech support guy doesn't get in, they can call City Hall. I can call this person and she will get somebody to call you. So, wow. yeah. Cool. It's That's awesome. good because I have a neighbor. Yeah. Inter internet service, a phone service actually has a phone number you can call them at. <laughs> yeah. have a line to do it. And talk to computers. a person. Wow. Exactly. That's a shock. Yeah, you call City Hall, it's great. And if, if there are multiple problems that people are experiencing, they're willing to come do, down and do like a town hall kind of thing to sit down with people. So, um, Other couple things they talked about, potentially putting up a hotspot at the park for Xfinity mobile users. Uh, they put hotspots all over the country. Uh, part of the reason uh, they like to work with cities to do that is that when there's a public emergency, they'll open up those hotspots to EMS when they're like putting out a fire or that kind of thing. So. Um, that's an added public safety feature that can happen, so they're looking at figuring out how to put a hotspot in the park. Um, the other thing they're looking at is seeing if there's any money in their budget to help with uh, possibly funding a community center. Um, so that'd be a grant we could get to help update it, and yeah, that'd be fun, yeah. um, I think. Uh, so we've got several conferences coming up. JD's going to be out all the next week. I'm going to be out at the second half of next week uh, at the CIS conference in Salem, then later in uh, September I'll be at the Oregon Association of Municipal Recorders and then in October I'll be at the League of Oregon Cities Conference in Bend. Um, the audit is still underway. Um, I have had a lot of difficulty, more than I expected and hoped for, in getting a hold of uh, the franchises because every year we have to send them a letter saying, hey, how much money did you give the city of Sodaville? So that's not just us saying, oh yeah, we got this much. Um, and it's, uh, it's more difficult than I expected, so <laughs> still working on that. 
everybody's got a boss. Sometimes you have to be busy and pushy. Yeah, well, that's how I got a hold of the Comcast people. She was the boss. <laughs> so, yeah, Comcast is sending all their paperwork, so I'm very happy with them. She drove right. on down here to Camby just to talk to us. Yeah, she did. It was great. Some of us can help be pushy if need be. Exactly. Um, and I've got some cool updates later on to talk about uh, Waterloo um, and potential uh, water stuff we're doing with them. Uh, and the other big thing is that Adina and I are going to uh, the small cities meeting for the region in Philomath tomorrow to uh, meet with the uh, League of Oregon Cities and talk about legislative updates. We will cover the legislative update a little bit later. I wanted to let everybody here know um, several of the cities in Lynn County are very unhappy with the list of legislative priorities that we looked at last month and are going to look at again tonight. And they are thinking of writing their own letter jointly to League of Oregon Cities going, hey, we don't like these. Please do better with your legislative polls in the future. So that will be an option for us to go forward if we so uh, decide. They don't have a draft of the letter written yet, but uh, they're just, they wanted to see which cities are going to sign on, then they'll write it, and then they'll send it all show it to everybody before that happens. So, Yeah, we will talk about that in depth a little bit later. Any more questions? Or any questions? So, um, cover me late in the day and stupid, but the audit, this I thought we finished our audit. Is yes. this the start of the next the one? The next one, yeah. But, good God, is the audit like all year? It's every year. I mean, ideally I you're, you're only year, doing it like over summer and fall. So that was kind of like a holdover from the before time? Yeah, that we, we got, finished? because of all the uh, the stuff that happened last year, the Secretary of State gave special permission for us to extend it okay. way beyond the normal amount of time. So, so this is the 21-22? Yep. Yeah. So have we really decided anything about the, um, you know, the Shell Station over here? Um, don't have a, haven't decided anything specific. Right now I'm looking at potential sources of funding to uh, get it rehabbed. I've talked to a few different people about um, amenities they can put in there, for example, like a uh, um, vending machine. Yeah. Uh, we talked to Comcast about, you know, is there any way you could get funding? The idea might be like they put in the internet or they give us computers, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so there, there are several grants uh, at grants.gov I've looked at that might potentially work to uh, rehab the building. So, yeah. Especially if we could maybe make it a cooling or a warming center. Yeah, we could look at that too. The problem with uh, vending machines though is that you know, I mean, we have a little vandalism going on down there right now anyways, mm -hmm. and, and uh, people want to try to break into it for whatever little cash, so that's only a problem. You know, it's one thing we want to consider before we put vending machines in. So. Especially out here, somebody just throw a rope around and drive off with a truck. With it, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is true. Chain, chain, not a rope. Yeah, yeah. Chain. Don't use ropes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying that you see it all the time. So yeah, it's true. People will drive off with entire bank ATMs. <laughs> that, that that is a fact. Uh, my son's worked with, worked with a kind. Worked with this guy he told me how to get a, a container box, you know, a 40 foot box to put his stuff in. Yeah. He said no. He says, I'd rather try breaking into my building than, than says, those container <laughs> boxes. You drop them in the truck and load the whole box up, take it off. They're leaving it. Drag it, it off. It. <laughs> They're stealing whole containers. It's crazy. Well, that trailers, can load them on there, 20 minutes be gone. It's unfortunate that's the society we live in. But yeah. yeah. It's only getting worse. It is only getting worse, for sure. Anyway, you have a question? Oh, not a question, just a comment about the the thing that you and Adina are going to tomorrow, the Lady of Oregon. I, I personally think that's a really good idea after listening to you guys and them them writing their own letter because there was a lot of stuff on that list that I noticed I looked at you guys' face at the last meeting and I noticed that there was a lot of stuff on that that didn't really pertain to big cities. Big cities. Exactly. Not little communities. Anything with over 200,000 people, it, I could see them using that guideline, but not not that for here. So I think that's a really good idea. What you guys are doing tomorrow is a really good idea. And I know you'll throw some of the ideas out there that that we had actually talked about. This is something we got to get turned in like right away, right? Yeah. So, so I mean, they're really not giving yeah. us a lot of options. Our legislative priorities have to be due tomorrow if we decide we want to do it. The okay. conversation started uh, in the city of Harrisburg, and President of the Councilors over there, they brought it to their meeting, and 
this one counselor said, can we just say no to all of this, like just across the board? And they're like, yeah, let's write a letter and see if all the others want to do it. So um, tonight we can vote on submitting some of the priorities we like. We could say we like water, we like That's infrastructure, then a few. Um, uh, but we, that also doesn't stop us from signing a letter in the future and going, hey, we want you to better choices. step up that again. represent all of us, or smaller choices even. Yeah. Or smaller city. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll get to that when we okay. talk about that. That's uh, all for me for this one. Okay. Yeah. How about water update, JD? Yes, we have some. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, yeah, yeah. rain today. Um, water I'm not going to read the numbers. You guys seen them. The water loss this month or last month was 1.58 percent. So that's our lowest loss yet. That is fantastic. Last month. <clears throat> Especially when the state regs say that 10 percent loss is, is good. Yeah, everybody should be <laughs> under nine. Yeah. Wow. Um, like so we'll do, we'll do an exception. So I have Buckmaster scheduled to be here on August 29th and 30th, and Monday and Tuesday after I come back to finish the new meters. The six of them, and hopefully remember, were not plumbed correctly, and to get that fixed, so things are the code. Um, the parks, there was a minor vandalism a couple weeks ago. I have photos if any council wants to see them. They're not that. Good. Um, fence for the basketball court, it sounds like there's five volunteers towards the end of September. They're going to hopefully get that up. I'm trying to make sure all the hardware is over there. There's a few pieces working with Ace Hardware to order. So we'll see how that goes. Spending on that, JD. Um, he's the big man. I don't know, just whenever, you know, it was end time after the first of the month, first of next month, because I got rent there next, the second weekend of next month after that, I'm free and to yeah, was, get a team up. It was a weekend. Yeah. It was Roger and Gary said he had like five guys, yeah. four or five guys now. Gary Evans said he's got some people that help us. Oh. I don't know how much help him could be, but you know, we'll get it, we get it up. Not that big a deal. No. Yeah, give me all of them. Yeah, so, I, I, I've been wanting that up since we started talking about the program. Yeah, we Yep. I got so, grandson that goes down there and chases the ball all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I, had, I had JD go through the list of everything we had in over there as we needed. There's only about three small pieces we need to get it completed. So once you get all the parts ready, it should be no time at all. Yeah, to even if, I, if Ace is having an issue getting the parts, you can still do the both ends and the side towards right. the down. Yeah, the so one might have to pull up a little bit on the back or one end or something. Perfect. Um, but make what we need if we have to. Yeah, that's an option. Okay. Zip ties. Um, you know, I got, well. I requested a bid for the trees down below that most of you I think have looked at. The bid came in at $4,000 I believe it was to remove five fir trees that before they fall. Um, with that, he, um, Brian Perry, has offered to help with his mini excavator to load the logs. They're going to cut them into eight foot lengths. Going to load them on the guy's trailer. He's going to take them up to the compound and dump them up there, and then we can put them up for bid or however the council would like to move with that. So I don't know if you guys are okay with spending the 4000 to safely remove those trees before they come down unsafely. Um, and I got a Alex has a way to pay for them in his mind because Parks doesn't have enough money really to do it. Yep. So there is uh, in the packet here, um, I do go a little more in depth about the finances here. So uh, we put $3,000 in the budget for uh, Parks this year. And this bid is for four thousand dollars. It's a big park expense. So my proposal is to pay for it two thousand dollars out of parks and then two thousand dollars out of contingency, uh, because the potential liability and damage and danger of these trees falling out is a real contingency we need to take care of. So uh, that is my proposal. There is a suggested motion there that splits it up. Especially if we have another, um, and I don't know what the status of this is, another garage sale where we have more people there. I really don't want them to be smushed. Yeah. Now we do have the funding, right? Yeah. Right. So Plus, right. one tree that's on the rock wall that's kind of shoving the rock wall out. 
So you just need a motion? I don't, yep. I, are we doing that now or do it later? Uh, yeah, the motion would be now and then they can okay. go ahead and take care of it. So I move that we spend $2,000 from the park improvement and $2,000 from the operating contingency fund uh, for tree removal at the park. So that's the second that's happening, but all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No, no. Alex. Excuse. Can you let, because I'm not here anymore, can you let Griffin probably know that we're moving ahead? Um, you can probably get my phone around. Yeah, just to let him know we're moving ahead, and then I will have to coordinate with him and Mr. Perry. All right. And so thanks for arranging for the lumber to go secure. Till we figure out. Thanks for arranging for the yes. lumber to go secure until we yes. can figure out what to do with it. Yes. Um, just for your information, Hutch came in yesterday, turned his key into the bathrooms. He's no longer going to be locking them up in the evenings. Life happens, and he had to do other things with it. So um, our park host, Tim, has stepped up. Take over that position. Thank you. Tim? Yep. I'm there in Nuts, but why not? Can yep. you take Thank him you. in, in uh, Nuts for the squirrels? Yes, I think we're Unsalted, he said. That's right. As so long as it's not more than $50. That's so, yeah. <laughs> with <laughs> moving on the bright. streets, <laughs> yep. um, Village Road, or yeah, the village area, the road grading pro yeah. request <laughs> has been turned into Lane County on the 27th of July for. Fisher Park in Maple. Um, so it's up to them when they are in the area and want to do that. So, and I let Joseph know already as well. And he was kind of upset at me for going. Mm -hmm. um, Wine Street off of Middle Ridge. It's like old, old chip sill and it's breaking apart really bad. I'm not sure if we want to look into doing something with that or question. And Knoll Street, off of that, I don't know if it is one of our private public roads, public private roads. And that's something that I'm going to bring to you guys at another time is maybe looking at doing something different with those roads. So just to throw that out there for right now. Um, is that already paved, that road? Which one? The, the one that you said, the the one that's coming apart. They both well mapped. It, it oil mat or chip sill. That's what it is. Yeah. Okay. Um, Knoll Street is just gravel. There's nothing on that other gravel and dirt. Right. So, um, miscellaneous. We've already discussed probably the conference at Seaside all next week. Oh, how you suffer? I know it, darn it. Um. There's, I don't know, I'm not going to bring that up right now. So I'm, I'm good. Thank you. So isn't there a grant that you can apply for every year for, through the roads department? For there is some roads, but I don't know if we qualify anymore because of our higher median income. But it's something I'll look into next season. I well, know, most to apply for yeah. every year. Right. Uh, every time. Stan used to always apply, apply for them, but uh, most of anyway, the grants are you've got to show uh, so much usage of the road per day. That's why some of the streets we have we could not do. That's why we've done the street back that over here twice because we, they wanted to get the money and didn't, and didn't have any streets to do it with. So. I remember every time you apply <coughs> for it, you get points. Yeah. And once it builds up enough points, then they. <laughs> but the state usually has requirements of, of what the road, road, what the agenda is for the roads. I mean, like say if it's like just going up to four houses, they probably won't say it because there's not enough usage on that road. So that's, there's certain roads you can apply for and some you can't. We can still apply though, right? Still apply, yeah. yes. I mean, you know, I don't think we need to get extravagant and all this as extravagant as we used to. I mean, ripping this out and doing that, and I mean, golly, man, I tell you, it's it'd be, like, it'd be, like I said, it'd, be, it'd be nice if we get that road going up the hill, if we get that back in the, in the public street instead of a part of the old public road, so we yes. can get something done with it. But I don't know, that might take a lot of finagling over. Yeah, just, yeah, these are things to think about. Right, perfect. And that's stuff I'm gonna look more into. Okay. 
you all done, JD? Yes, sir. Okay, new business, resolution 2208. So uh, the so we have what's called the enforcement ordinance, which is ordinance uh, 9805 from 1988. Sorry, 1998, and it specifies that we need to have enforcement officers officially chosen by the council uh, to enforce certain city ordinances. And right now, rather than having a specific position be there to enforce city ordinances, legally we have as our city enforcement officer for everything, Mr. Stan Smith, who no longer works here. So if we have to go to court, Stan has to be the one to go to court because he's the last person designated by the council, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, in the past, there had been a split. Um, the city recorder would be the uh, enforcement officer for uh, zoning, and then the public works director would be the enforcement officer for nuisances. So I wanted to bring that back to say those positions will be the enforcement officers for those ordinances rather than have Stan Smith do it. So you're not imposing a, a specific person, it's a position? A position. Yeah, yep. okay. I think that makes more sense. Related but not related. Is it still, because I'd asked this before, where if something is bad enough, we have to take it to Lebanon Court? Yeah, so most of the small cities in uh, Lynn County uh, have uh, go through the Justice of the Peace for Lynn County to uh, get all of their ordinances taken through. So. Um, you know, for example, if somebody doesn't want to pay the permit fee for living in an RV while their house is being constructed, uh, then I have to go to the Alvin County Court and go, hey, uh, if this person didn't pay, we want them to pay, and then um, that will be that. So. so we need a motion on this, but we want to accept this resolution 2208. I move to adopt resolution 2208. Motion moved, moved and seconded. Have any other discussions? Motion. All Take a vote. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries. Out. <laughs> okay. Correct. One, one feathers in your cap. JD. I'm sorry. One cap feathers in your cap. Now you got it. Now you part of an enforcement officer. He's going for reason. that badge. I know. <laughs> <what it is. laughs> he just raised his hand to say. <laughs> so, he's got to find the badge first. Yeah, right. Yeah, no kidding. Uh -huh. oh, oh, I, I, I can find I can find the badge pretty easily. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> three hot buster for a badge, but it'd be a badge. There you go. Okay, <laughs> dog catcher badge. There you go. Yeah, one of those two. We're a cat badge from New York City. Okay, moving on with old business. We got uh, water infrastructure. All right, so uh, I want to let you know I did talk to this Waterloo City Council uh, earlier this month uh, about um, potentially partnering for water, and the City Council there did vote to uh, research getting that done with us. So um, I got them connected with the Regional Solutions team, and ultimately the Regional Solutions team is going to meet in September with us and Waterloo, and we're going to figure out uh, what, what could work, what has to go into planning, what makes sense for it. Um, and you know there there are a few different things I wanted us to make sure we think about how we move forward. Um, one is that we jointly just start doing it all. Um, another one is that um, you know we have a a special district that would have to be created by voters that operates this thing, the treatment plant and the pipeline. And another thing is thinking about just building it ourselves, kind of with Waterloo's blessings, with the op option for them to get connected in the future. Um, because there isn't as much of a need for them at the moment, and there's a bit of public opposition to um, a city water system. So the idea would be, like, rather than automatically roping them in, we just build a treatment plant there and a pipeline, and then they can use it in the future if they want. Um, along as you know, we just get their blessing to get it done, so we have to go through a zoning process and everything like that. But ultimately, again, probably give that to an independent water district, that kind of thing, because. Oh yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, administratively. As much as I don't love the Special Districts Association of Oregon, um, it's really just the best way to go administratively. So, any questions about that? A whole lot, especially oh, as it good. involves. But one of the first things is, don't we even before we go anywhere have to talk about water rights? Yeah, and that's what the Regional Solutions Team. So we, I mean, that would be because that would be a deal breaker, right? Oh, there. if you if can't they get water say rights. no, then right. it doesn't make a difference how we go about exactly. it. 
Yep, yeah, that'll be covered by the regional solutions team. And is this something we pay for? We ask for a grant to do this? Um, let's see, so the regional solutions team, uh, you know, the, the advice is free. Once we decide we actually want to do it, uh, that's when I walk into the legislature and go, okay, give me money. You get money. So. so basically what we'll need to do is get Waterloo to dedicate us some land, right, yeah. for the install of the water treatment. Yeah. Um, I doubt whether there'll be very many residents there. It doesn't sound like there's a lot of interest. Yeah. So basically it's for us right now yeah and maybe bring them on board yeah so if that's the case it's just them kind of donating land to us but i mean how's that i don't you know. yeah what's well, in it that for might them? Be, yeah yeah well how, what, how are we gonna pay that the, off with, uh, yeah <laughs> i mean i'm gonna ask the legislature for money that's, well yeah we don't have any money we'll, we'll have just, some kind of a rental fee on the <coughs> or something but I, yeah. I don't know i'm just curious how that exactly yeah. i mean i know it's just kind of Pit balling right now, and but that's yeah. why if it was a separate entity doing it, that would alleviate a lot of that as well. Right. I understand right. that. Special yeah. district. Yeah, exactly. It, I mean, your solutions team would help you through that too. They? Yeah, they'd help figure out a lot of that. So when I was public works over in Lyons, we didn't have water. Well, we had water, but we didn't run the water system at all. Um, Lyons Mahama Water District, its own entity. Supplied the water to Lions and to the Haman. So, what's the requirements of a treatment plant? I mean, our water, like I say, we pull it out of wells, and you know, for the for the most part, it's a pretty fresh, clean water without a lot of chemicals and stuff in it. Right. I mean, what are the requirements? So, how much different is that water going to be? Is it going to be something like Lebanon's water, which most likely it would be a chlorinated water? Yes. Yeah. Oh, to, to what? To how strong the concentrations, I, I can't answer Yeah, because it depends on how the well is to feed it as to... Yeah, it wouldn't be a well be coming out of the river. Oh, it's coming directly out of the river? It would be if it was coming from water. Mm. But don't you have to chlorinate the water once a year? Anyway? No. You don't? So why would that happen? So that have to be... Why couldn't you use the ground as some filtration, you know, to pull it? You know, I mean, something close to the river but yeah. not something like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, something close to the river, but... I mean, instead of sucking it directly out of there, which everybody and their brother just dumps crap into, right? Well, that's the thing. It would have to go through a sand filter or something, and that would be part of the treatment process. Okay. And then chlorinate it after that, most likely. Um, it could be, instead of sand filter, it could be membrane filters, which is the most common thing. Now, if you go over to Lebanon's treatment plant, yeah, it's all membranes. And it's kind of cool, actually, to walk through and look at it. So then... Where would we be as far as the water that we get from our well? Would that be a thing again where they can't mix? And so that would be my understanding at this time. But that I I can't give you a definite answer on most of it because it's, a lot of it's. I guess we just need to kind of figure out. Sorry, Brian. We kind of figure out how the finances are going to work because, like I said, I mean, right now well, that's water is our revenue, right? Yeah. Yep. So, I mean. To lose that source of revenue for the city <laughs> could be catastrophic. I, yeah, I don't think you lose it though. You don't think so? Yeah. We'd still pay for our water, right? Uh, the, but where the, would idea, the, money go? the idea would be that um, a, a, a water <coughs> district would be independent from the city of Sodaville, mm -hmm. but we can establish a, a, an agreement with the, we call it the Soda Water District. I like that one. Uh, that there's a contract where Soda will provide all of its all of its administrative and technical services, and that money ends up flowing back in here. Because you're not just going to give your your pipes away, your your infrastructure. You're not giving it away. So there would be some benefit for you for having that. But it's all stuff that has to be worked through. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like I say, that's our you know our yeah, main yeah. resource of revenue. Yeah. And if we lose that, we're we're screwed going down the road. I think so. Yeah. It's definitely so something we need to consider. It's, it's not an uncommon arrangement like uh, in Elgin, for example. Uh, the city provides all of the administrative and technical services for the Parks District. Their executive director is an is a city employee who is a contracted... Uh, hey, Jeff. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, yeah. On a positive note, we're not trucking water yet. It is a positive note, for sure. I mean, it really is. But yeah. like I say, I mean, we can't lose our revenue source right. and our ability yeah. to sustain our city with, you know, finances. 
right. to where we're having to give all of our money away. I mean, we might as well not and I not even be incorporated in right. And I don't think that's that's an issue. Okay. We, would, we wouldn't even look at something like that. Yeah. I mean, it's just something to keep on the forefront yeah. of our mind. It That's is. the only reason why I'm bringing it up. What else is saying is if they're not getting if Congress or the state house not going to give us the money, then it's a nowhere project. Right. Yeah. It's got to be all grants. It's not a, not a loan because we can't pay. But like I said, it all still grant. breaks down to billing and, and all that stuff because we still got to maintain our infrastructure even if we're not giving our pipes away. We got to have resources to be able to maintain it. Right. So I mean, we got to generate funds. Plain and simple. And that, that's our biggest resource right now. And I don't see any way that we're going to be able to collect any more going, going down the road, at least not, not large yeah. amounts anyway. Yeah, that would be the idea. We would establish a contract agreement. We would just look at a couple of pure institutions and go, hey, send me your contracts, and I'd just do that here so that yeah. we don't lose the funds. Uh, they're just handled a little differently. Right. So as long as the... It all into additional tanks. Have we have we looked at the at the cost of additional water tanks? Um, I don't know about water tanks. I didn't think that ended up being really feasible. Um, additional wells might be I know another idea. Of it. Cottage Grove, they just put in like a million gallon tank. Wow, it's pretty impressive. That is impressive. That is, yeah. and that's for Cottage Grove. It's not that big of a city. I would think that if we do somehow increase the water we're getting, whether it's from there You're going to be or, treating it. or from like the next one talking about Jackman's well, having another tank and backup would be good because then maybe we actually could water our lawns if we had extra water. <laughs> Once it starts going down, it's going down no matter what you got. It is. And then six months, yeah. then you're, you're out that much water instead of. It, it just it doesn't make logical sense to me that we run out of water. We have an extra tank with extra water. Well, we're going to run out of it anyway. Well, what size tank are you thinking about? Because the tank we have now will only last you 10 days at the most. Well, two will last us 20 days. Huh? And then you're and out of water one. totally. But you keep filling them up. They don't fill up is the issue. But if we have other ways to get water in, why would they not be filling up? I know if you read the water study that was done before, there's one of the guys said an additional 250,000 gallons and one to two more wells. He felt like that would be the solution. What? Honestly, if you have one well that would go all year round, in the when the other four wells are drying up, if one well was good, then possibly you wouldn't need anything else. I mean, there's a lot of what ifs and could be's. Right. And if you're testing wells in the middle of the winter and then throwing them online, it does you absolutely no good in the summer when they're doing what the rest of them are doing. It looks to me like some of these wells down lower, my wells are producing water right now. Well, and the cities are right now too. But I'm keep I'm babying them through right now. Right. So you would think that. You know, some of the other wells down lower and stuff might have better. They might, but there are two years. Your house well or your irrigation well is not running 24 hours a day. Like, not, granted, they're not running 24, but they're running 10 on, 15 off, 10 on, 15 off. Your residential wells aren't doing that. Mm -hmm. See, what I'm what I'm trying to get at is if this whole thing with water there <coughs> just becomes a bust. We've got to have another option. Sure. Yeah. And right now we're look, we're trying to look at everything. You know, I need to go to the one time talking to Herring. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't know what his wells produce either because we don't get the water record records records from that. That uh, it should be supposed to be, I think. I don't know. He's supposed to record how much. How There's a do. report sent once a year to us from the state on what's going on with his world stuff. And I, I'll have to look and see where that's at. Yeah. But we do get something once a year on his world I think we both get something on him. I don't know how often it was like that, but I just, like I say, I was sitting here when that, when there was, got put in. Right. 
So what, remind me, because I will actually you tell me, what was the issue with Harrington? He wouldn't let, we were supposed to use his wells and he wouldn't let us because no. of personality issues? Or? Yeah, he, he wasn't supposed to use his wells. So those were, he, one time he blasted his quarry and caused a 3.6 earthquake. I could eat it at my house. Which can damage wells up on Harrington Drive and all the wells up there. Well, the city made it made the state mandate he drill those wells to monitor so it, it doesn't damage the city's wells. And, and he's only it, blasted once in the last two years. And anyway, that drilling those wells cost him Muko money, and the city said tough shit. So Harrington decided he didn't want to do anything for us because yeah. He says you can, you can't use these wells for nothing. They're just gonna sit there and we can monitor them once a year, and that's all we're gonna do. So that might be an option to change. I keep hearing a central theme of looking at them in the winter is no good. Is it a huge deal to go out and see how much a well produces to check on Jackman's, to check on Harrington's? Is that right, Harrington? Okay. What, what basically you gotta do? You gotta get a pump company in. Mm -hmm. They gotta put. Pumps to put lines down the wells because most of them don't have the, the water lines down. Them. You got to have a pump, 24-hour pump test on them, which costs a few thousand dollars to have the trucks come out and do all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And depending on how much they charge, huh? That's what they did to ours. Yeah. Yeah. And the one that Jack was on AKA pump did yeah. for a 72-hour pump test. See how far it went down, and it went down. They still they take 35 feet of water. And be covered within 20 minutes. So like, I don't know what the report says anyway. It's been a long time. So it's a quote from the report is in the uh, the next item. But anyway, so that's what it does. It costs a lot of money to, to, to test the monitor of the well. And I don't know. I don't know what hearing does with those wells up there. I'm sure he's got somebody to monitor those wells. Yeah. Maybe yep. genetic level of what he does. I don't know. But no. It's just an expensive process to test the well. But at least we have options, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing right, right. now is investigating all the options, trying to go forward, you know, but at least we're trying to move forward this time instead of just hitting this hell made. I mean, yeah. I mean I've been on council six years now, and I mean, we've been talking about at least five, so. We whip the same dog every, every Exactly, time. so we just need to try to move forward. Yeah. <laughs> well, we want to talk the, the next bit. Uh, so we have a a, uh, a financing agreement with Business Oregon to rehab the Jackman Well and start developing it for our use. I think the amount is uh, 567000 in partially forgivable and non-forgivable loans. Uh, the project specifically is for converting the existing private well to municipal well and constructing a 75,000 gallon bolted steel reservoir. Um, so the, the financing agreement officially expired in 2020 but Business Oregon has held it for us because we knew, they, we told them that we wanted to look into things a little more, I guess. And uh, the time to tell them whether or not uh, we actually want to do that is uh, now. So uh, they called me up this week and we're asking, hey, so are you going to do this or not? Because uh, if not, they want to start using that money for other things. Um, so I, I did provide some information there. Um, so there was a report in 2019 from GSI Water Solutions and they said the lack of recovery in the Jackman well suggests that 35 gallons per minute is not a sustainable rate of water production from this aquifer. However, it may be possible to operate a well intermittently, as is typical with the city's well operations, at a rate less than 35 GPM, with periods of rest to allow the aquifer to sufficiently recover. The required recovery time will be dependent on the operating rate of the well, and the ability of the well in this application to fully recover after seasonal pumping is uncertain. So, so my we need to pump test in order to I'm dry. I'm confused though. I thought the whole thing was we heard this report that it wasn't sustainable because it's continuously, and that's what we threw everything on. But this is saying, well, it's not sustainable all the time, but intermittently like the other ones. So yes, that's what the report says. So where was the issue? <laughs> one of the engineers decided it should decided that was going to be a, it was going to abandon all the wells and use that one well to run the city. But what they figured out. <clears throat> We have this we report have, yeah. that says this. Yeah. I don't get it. If the report says it could be used intermittently, it has a flow intermittent. That's been my problem the whole time. Yeah. So what? Why can't we just go forward with that premise? You know, with the well the test that we've already done. A lot of the right? problem yeah. with the test I mean, is they was given the wrong information up front. They was given the information that we wanted to use that well only. And so when they came back, and I've, I've studied the 
testing and stuff. When they came back, they said, no go. This won't supply soda bill. They who? The engineering. They got people that's not this report. Somebody. This report was something else. And they interpreted this report? Well, when they came back and said that, then there was another company brought in. The other company just went off from what the previous company said. Or not just, but they based a lot of that on what the previous company said. I don't feel like there was good testing done on that. And even there's parts in there that say this was not done correctly. I think there was good testing. I just don't think there was good interpretation of what our goals were. Exactly. Right? You know, I think the tests were satisfactory. You know, I, I, the results were, you know, what they were. But the way it was portrayed, exactly what you were just saying, that, you know, I mean, it was our primary will, and it's not. It was a supplemental. And we couldn't get the last administration to, well, Towards the end, she did, but she went at it at, at a, you know, in a wrong direction and pissed a bunch of people off. There you go. Yeah. And then they would not sign off on it because, well, she was being a regular. Yep. You know what? Say it. Yep. I, I won't. Emails from city staff casting aspersions at state employees that really have no place in the work that was trying to be done. So, with that being said, on this we still have five hundred and fifty, um, yeah, five hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars, right? Yep. But with that, it's noted in here that some of it's forgivable and some of it is a non-forgivable loan. Yeah. So, on that non-forgivable loan portion of it, how does that work? How are we going to pay into that? I mean, is that something the citizens are going to have to pay for, or is that something that we put on like a your payment plan or yeah there will be a, a payment plan for that like we have an IFA loan that gets paid off um, several thousand dollars every year um, but that last payment for that last IFA loan ends this year so we can keep that standing payment item in the budget and just apply it to this going forward so, so that's right but our main our main main grant we got through the water system back in 1980 is just about to yeah. expire so we've got that money we've been paying that all along we can just put that in the Y'all have been here a lot longer than I have, and I really don't understand why is this not enough to move forward? Uh, I mean, right now, the state just wants a yes or no from us. Do you want to get this money funds. to do this well? So yes. why can't we get the money? I mean, it, do we need to first make sure that Jackson's well is still good in the summer? Well, J.D., what do you think? I think it's a waste of money if you don't make sure that it's closed during the summer. <clears throat> I so, mean, it's it's kind of a waste in my mind to operate another well that does the same thing the other wells do. That's just me. It's the only not my choice. The only difference, though, J.D., is that this is down in the valley. I mean, this is down in flat land, right? This right. is where all the water rushes from, from that aquifer, right? I've never Up seen there, a map of the aquifer, so I don't know how they run yeah, I, I'm just saying that, you know, I know as you get higher up the hill, hill <laughs> I mean, you got to go down further to get to the water, right? And we all know from, you know, Roger's explanations in the past, they just barely went down far enough to tap into it, right? So, you know, that's a lot of what our, our problem is. I mean, you're 250 feet up there, I don't know exactly what it is at the elevation for that, and you only went down about 400 feet. So even for your I mean, wells, right? How how deep are the pipes in the there? The well number two, if that's one you're referring to. No, any of them. I mean, just any of them. It was just a general statement. They're all different levels, but well number two, if I'm correct, was supposed to be 75 feet to get the water, and they went way past that, and it doesn't okay. get hardly anything. Okay. It is your least producing well, and it should have been your highest producing. Right. Because they drilled too far. According to the way it was witched by the witch, you way back quick. So, yeah. Right. And we, you know, those well witchers, they, you know, they're just guessing too, but, you know, the person who drilled the well didn't even, didn't even check it. He, went, he's, he wanted to make more money, so he put the whole deeper. Well, deeper is not always better. No, oh, it's, it's not. No, no, no. You got to go where the water is, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Come over to my place. And look at the green grass coming down on Oh, gosh. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I guess. Yeah. So, 
So can I, I, mean, can I, can I, I can even shift? one well that's helping a little bit be worthwhile? Yeah, I mean, my so my my question here right now that you can answer better than I will ever be able to is, we're we'll able to kind of baby the wells right now, and they're they're doing okay. Would having just another one be helpful, or would that lead to the same problem in the future? If it's going to be helpful as long as it's producing water. Um, the other three or four, I can go by last year and this year. La this year was a lot wetter year than last year was, and that's helped us out tremendously. When the four wells dropped off last year, another well dropping off is not going to really do you any good. If that well is able to maintain a constant flow and produce better than three of the other four wells, then yeah, it would be it would be good. But if it's going to do well, one is your workhorse. Well, four is half of well one. Wells three and two are less than that. So if you had another one that could produce similar to well one then yeah, it would be helpful in times like last year. And it would be helpful this year, but right now our wells are maintaining and they're keeping the reservoir full. They've not kept up two weekends, one weekend last month and one weekend in end of June. But I've been babying on them and yeah. It'd be nice if we had a really good well and we could actually maybe water on water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you know by chance what our worst year, I mean, how many gallons during our worst year did we have to truck in? So what are we trying to supplement, I guess, is my question. I'll look into that. I don't know. I don't have the prior years. Quick, 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 for a second if you want. Well, I'm just curious because, I mean, if we can come out with, you know, a couple hundred thousand gallons a year out of this other well, to supplement, you know, 120,000 gallons that we've been trucking in, um, then we're ahead of the game. Yep. Just. Um. Last November we trucked in 185,000. Now I'm in charge. Okay. That is 30,000 more than the reservoir that's up there. Um, the month before that, October, we trucked in 222, 223,000 gallons. So that's bringing in well more than the one reservoir that's up there already. So that's almost it. And then those were the months where we were getting going again. I don't have prior to October, I can pull that up. But so I mean, mathematically, if you figure it out and you're doing 20 gallons per minute out of a pump down here in the valley or in the low portion in, in the city. And you're running at 10 minutes, right? So, you know, that's what, 200 gallons every 10 minutes. So it's on for 10, off for 15. So just say three times per hour, that's 600 gallons per hour that that thing will produce back into it, right? Should, yes. So if you do that over a you know a 24-hour period, you know I mean that's that's 12,000. That's almost 15,000 gallons a day. So in 10 days, it's 150,000 gallons. In 30 days, it's 450,000 gallons. 15, if it does 15,000 a day, that would be the only one you needed. Yeah, I'm just saying, right? I'm, I mean, if that's daily water usage for the system is right now between 15 and 17. Yep, but if this thing was, I mean, according to the, the well test, and granted it was during the winter months, it's a different time of year, and we need to figure that out. Right. But if That's it's, what I'm saying. Yeah. If it's capable of doing that, yeah. right, for, yeah. for an hour so during the, the lean part of the year, it's definitely going to supplement any, any water that we've trucked in. So Absolutely. I guess I that's our point. Uh, we just need to figure out where, where we're at. Yeah. Jeff, I think the reason why, one of the reasons they said, about the Jackman well was because they said no because they wanted it to be sustainable and even though it could have been 
that's where somebody talked to me and said, well, it's not going to be that way. There's no real guarantees it's going to be that exactly. way. Exactly. But there is no guarantees. I mean, they're talking about eliminating Green Peter Dam, right? Yeah. <laughs> no guarantees that so, river's going to be there in 20 years. What I'd, like to, what I'd like to quick say about our well, which comes off of the same aquifer that raised on, okay? Okay. Ours produces between 35 and 50 gallons a minute. The only That's a thing, lot of water. That is a lot of water. And we're only, I believe, at either 125 or 175 feet. And and our, our automatic water thing broke. So there's been some times you were talking about running 24 hours a day for irrigation to irrigate our garden. Ours has probably five times this month alone, the water hasn't shut off and it's gone 24 hours a day. Wow. So what I'm saying is if ours will do that and it's still on the same aquifer, just like Shans is, even though Shans on county side and then there's ours and then there's Ray's, yes. I'm sure that Ray's is going to produce the same amount of water that it did. There's no real guarantees on the same aquifer. I realize that. On the same aquifer. There's no guarantees on the same aquifer. Because he buys his water to drink in that. Who? So, oh, well. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's iron and stuff. Yeah. 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 Right. Well, no, he put a filtration system on his. Anyways, it yeah, sounds yeah, like we're yeah. still in the process of trying to figure things out, which is which is good. And, you know, we just need to figure out what we're going to do with this five hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. How much we want to commit? I'd say use um, it. Well, I say use it too, but we don't want to waste it, right? right? I mean, if we could use that five hundred sixty-seven thousand to help put in a water treatment plant down there in, in Waterloo. Waterloo, then so be it. But if it'll help us get a well that's sustainable here, that's what we want. But are they <laughs> going to let you use? for water, who is the thing? No. Yeah. So See, this, is, this so, is specifically for the Jack and Well. So yeah. is there the potential of a grant or something for us to get to possibly check that well out? Um, and if we're actively doing something, coming back and talking to these people and say, wow, we, we really still want that money. We just don't want to waste your money. So let us just check our well in the next month. During the hardest I like that year. idea a lot, actually. Yeah. If we can get a grant money to go down there and do another test yeah. on this to satisfy and make sure that we, and we can hold this money to maybe try to do improvements and maybe you know on top Tie of that, yeah. that would be good. And then, then here's the thing. I know that we're not rich, but do we have any funds that we could do this? And we're saving money by not trucking in water. Yeah, right potentially now. We are. Yeah. repay I'm thinking. Our, I can't remember that special account. I'd have to, I'd have to, i have to think about that a little bit. There may be, there may be a way to do it. What I heard from Business Oregon was they may have some funding available to go and look, um, but that was that came from somebody else there who had CC'd our uh, our regular contact there, and I asked her, is there actually funding available? She hasn't gotten back to me, and I think that might be just come kind of fatigue. Like we've already given you all the money in We're the not world, giving you more money. you know. <laughs> uh, so I could look and figure out if. We actually have the money ourselves to do it. So we did have some of the money left over from um, that, that legislative appropriation. Mm -hmm. Some of it's going to uh, Buckmaster to get those uh, those meters um, fixed. those meters yeah. fixed. Um, but I mean, if we show but, yeah, progress, there we will show be. that we're interested and we're trying to get it tested so we don't waste the money, will they delay this decision from tomorrow? I, they didn't give me a firm deadline for when they're going to pull it from us, but I, I get the sense that they want it. They want so, it out soon. I'm sure they do, but yeah. I think they will also recognize that we have not had, um, I don't know what you mean, active leadership. We've not had a consensus. We've not really been working on this, and we are now. So it's a different world. And if we need to go plead our case with them, yeah. um, we'll do it. And you've got to remember, too, that that well on Ray's property was drilled in about in the 70s and it has not dried up since not once so that's something to take into account also so can this be something you could research and we consider and i'm just the only one talking but does this sound like something that so alex is this money something that we can say yes we want to use it and then not be able to use it later on or 
if we say yes, are we tied into it? <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, we could we could say yes now and then go, oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I, we could. I mean, we're like the guy who's called Wolf all the like, time, yeah, right? Yeah, let's not ever go back to them for something else again. Yeah, yeah that's the problem. Yeah, I mean, we've it. been chasing this for, gosh, at least four yeah. years with Judy. I mean, we've had these funds uh, appropriated she's, for she's us. Got so. a good, yeah. Yeah. She's got a good point that she made. I like we it. finally have leadership and general consensus that can get this done and use it the right way instead of being told, no, you can't. Yes. So I, I could look at playing with some of the numbers. I could look at what we'll have left over from the uh, the legislative funds. Um, I can after the, the plumbing's done, um, and I could look at using our water acquisition budget because this is about water acquisition, and see if there's some funding in there to just you know maybe call GSI up and go, can you do that? But now yeah. and how much does it cost? Yeah, um, then we can go. GSI, that's one that we dealt with last time, and I mean, she had so pissed off. I mean, I, th um, I don't know whether I trust them going down the road again. <laughs> it, it might be a, a different one, like a Civil West of the State Circuit Writer Service. Okay. They might be willing okay. to just come Because they do should do have a maybe we'll be there tomorrow. It might be. So, we can say hello and be like, hey, want some can money? We, <laughs> we don't want to talk to you. Yeah. But I mean, this no. seems like if we can find out if it'll work at all, go with that, because even a little bit, I mean, this is... Maybe it's a long-term solution. Maybe it's a short-term solution. But yeah, even if it's 20, 25 water. years, right? Yep. I mean, if it's 20, 25 year solution, I, I mean, I won't care after that either. Yeah, so right. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> you, 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 the next guys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we have this problem so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. so solved. Can can it be a, who who has to do the test? On, can it be somebody that's a well driller that does tests like that? Engineer. Yeah, I'm doing engineering firm, so when they piss them off. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I will, I will see what wiggle room there is to uh, get something done. We're probably not going to be able to find a grant that's going to pay for it, um, at least not quickly. Not quickly. Um, but, you know, there, I could reach out to a couple different people and go, okay, here's our budget. Could you drill and see what it's like? Well, see, we recently just gave back 300 and some odd thousand, right? Yeah, but so yeah, that was out else. of this. No, it wasn't. It was part of this okay. water <laughs> funding thing because all that was going to go towards that. Yeah. And so we don't want to continue to chisel away at this. We want to. Yeah, I think the general consensus is to try to pursue something down there and get you know, a water, good logical yeah, solution yeah. saying yay or nay. It's, it's going to sustain us for the next few years or no, it's not going to sustain us. And then, in the process, continue with Waterloo working with them as a second alternative. So. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds good. All right. I'll uh, I'll see what I can do to get. We might need to have another city council meeting, um, just to approve. That. Yeah, we may need to approve an RFP and that kind of thing and approve a contract. So we'll see. We'll try and pull see up your wizardry and let's get this done. Let's get it done. That's what I do. <laughs> and this one can finally address the is it or isn't it. Yeah, yeah. It's been bantered around for so long. Okay. All right. All done with the water water infrastructure. How about the uh, OCWC whatever membership? <laughs> yeah. So this was the, uh, the Oregon Cascades West Council of Governments. Um, they were the uh, their executive director came uh, to our last meeting and talked about. Uh, the organization and the benefits of membership, um, all the wonderful things we get, all the services in the area that we get a say in directing if we decide to take over our old membership. Uh, I did get an invoice from them, um, and it would be $750 for the year uh, based on our population. And um, so that, but most of that goes directly to the organization. Some of the other stuff goes to special projects. So that's another entity I could look at and see, like, hey, can we, you know. <laughs> Can we get some of that back, basically? <laughs> do you still uh, feel that it's a worthwhile investment? I do. Okay. That's yeah. Good I really like the fact that we have a represented representation equal to any other city. Or yeah. Town. Yeah. One, one, one vote, one city yes. instead of the big cities get 35 votes and the little guys like us get, well, we just get kicked out. Kicked <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 So you want a motion whether we're going to accept uh, Yeah, so we'll need to do two things one night. One will be to vote to join it, and then we'll have to nominate a member of the council to serve 
in on the board of directors. So nominate the one that's not here. Yeah. You have been voluntold. Alright, yeah, so there's a suggested motion up there. Okay, so we have a motion to uh, accept membership for the Bergen Water, whatever the group is, for membership. I move right. to resume the City of Soda Mills participation in the Oregon Cascades West Council of Governments. I second. Favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Now you have to nominate a member of the council to serve on the board. And just for time purposes, uh, what the bylaws of the organization say is that if the person who is designated to attend isn't able to, they can choose somebody else. That can be another elected official, or it can be me who goes to that meeting that night. So um, it'll be your responsibility, whoever gets appointed, to do it. But if you're not able to do it at that time, you can just call somebody else and that's that. And how often are the meetings? Um, I think they're quarterly. Take a look. Do we have any volunteers? <laughs> Where is it? What is it? Uh, it's in Albany. It's in Albany? Yep. So they have them quarterly. Anybody have a burning desire to do it? I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it. It's just I don't know... <laughs> my schedule is so up in the air it's just yeah. so hard for me to commit to something like so that I mean, otherwise I'd be on the apprenticeship board <laughs> run the electrical <laughs> what time of day is it mostly let's see if you look at their most recent meeting I'd say I'm not opposed to doing it but he might be going off the <laughs> especially now <laughs> still waiting uh, they happen at uh, in the afternoon, so two to four. Mm -hmm. uh, that's untenable for some out. people. Roger, Roger could appoint himself. Huh? You could appoint yourself. I I will take it with backup. Backup, okay. Okay. All right. So you four. need to officially you nominate. Pardon me. Two to four. Are you available there? Two to four. Depends on the day, but if it's a specific day, yeah. day that doesn't Nominate work. Adina, and I'd like to be a backup for me, B. Thank you. All right, and then we need a vote to confirm the nomination. I, I hereby nominate Adina Alavares to serve on the Oregon Cascade West Council of Governments. That's it, Forever and ever. No! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right now. Um, not for 25 years. All, all committee assignments come up again in uh, <laughs> January. So, <laughs> yeah. January of next year, you can see if you still want to do it or if another counselor wants to do it. So. Okay. We have motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. With yeah. Roger as a backup. Yeah. That's like a little mouse when she said it. Aye. <laughs> All right, so next up is the fun one. It's the League of Oregon Cities Legislative <laughs> Priorities. So I included you all, again, the list of uh, possible legislative priorities in the packet. Tonight, the idea would be that we can just look at some of them and uh, see if there are five that we're okay with. I know, like, water resources planning was the one that we liked, and um, there was another one about transportation infrastructure funding. Uh, there is it. Infrastructure funding to support needed housing was one that got there. Uh, wildfire plan that was a big one. Uh, yeah, I was going to say wildfire and, wildfire and, and water. water was the only two that really caught my eye. Yep. And we don't have to get five, right? If the other ones suck, we can just get two. If the oh, other yeah. ones aren't good, we can just keep two. Uh, so they, they give us a form to fill out online, and it goes, choose your five, and if you don't put some five, they go, hey, where's the rest? Choose five. Choose five. So you can't choose look at, so we want to do wildfire water, um, economic development, infrastructure funding for housing, and um, funding and alignment for state land use initiatives. What was that? Alcohol revenues? What's that about? Well, let's take a look. <coughs> the LC was advocated to enhance the revenues for the sale of alcohol to mitigate the impact of recent legislation. James will be otherwise reduced. What about the transportation? So you put them in the order that you want. 
Yeah. Okay, so the, the alcohol one is that right now we get a percentage of the alcohol tax, but that percentage is going to go down. Uh, so this would uh, be about making sure it doesn't go down. Is that the same for marijuana? No. And then there was something marijuana taxes. I'm, I'm good about not. Yeah, there is one of the down. marijuana taxes. Um, right now, there's a state cap on city taxes on marijuana, but there's no marijuana shop here. So not that we know anymore. So I think the alcohol <laughs> revenue. I think the alcohol <laughs> revenue needs to stay yep. in our plan because that's. I mean, we make it's money revenue. off of that. Um, I don't think. I don't know about like housing because we're kind of limited. Uh, on roads, so yeah, I don't think that really and matters I, to personally, us. Personally, we don't really purrs because we're not a big city with a lot of people on purrs. No. I think that is the best thing the Founding Fathers did was not get us on purrs. <laughs> that is one of the most damaging public so we, policies. So we've got three then, right? Yeah. Right? Alcohol, yeah. water, Alcohol, and wildfires. Water, wildfires. Um, land use, that seems like it might be helpful. What is, what's helpful about that? Mm. Trying to find it. Is there more than one water one? Well, he's talking about land, land use, and I don't know how that's going to benefit the city of Sotoville. What about our taxes? Uh, I don't want to pick it up. Okay, so the idea is to make changes to state land use planning that makes it less expensive for cities to implement state land use planning rules. And does that affect us? Yeah, it means that I'll spend less time on it and won't have to cost the city as much money if they ever have to do land use planning stuff. Well, how much of that is involved in that? <laughs> I mean, we don't have that much well, we land to really worry about, right? Yeah. Well, uh, a lot of the land use planning is a very broad thing. Uh, so, like, we get a, a land use planning grant every year that's $1,000 that we use for land use planning. Uh, really that comes down to like anything that is involved so anytime I look at permits or up looking at our comprehensive plan and trying to make changes to it or um, uh, But you do that yeah. anyways, right? I mean the city recorder has always done that in the past. I mean it's just... Yeah, they have. This would make it... The idea would be to make it easier for us to do it so we're not spending as much time on it and thus not spending as much money on it. Okay. So you think it's worthwhile? I do. Okay. Yes, I don't fully understand it. So, and which one if you're good with it, I'm good. What with page? It. Uh, that is the first one. That is on page two. Say two on the bottom. So community on page three, community resiliency and wild, wildfire planning. Yes. That's one. Alcohol was on. That is on page seven. Page seven. So that's number two. And then water, which one is that? Is there only one for water? Yes, well, that is on page 11. Class. Place-based water resource planning. Do we not have the same thing you guys get? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, same thing. Just full I should say, yeah, the LFC Fire packet, right? that's the one first. Water utility rate and fund assistance really wouldn't go to us much. I'm just looking for anything that says water. Yeah, it's on page 11. No, no, no. I, I know. I found that oh, one. Oh, gotcha. I'm just looking to see any others because we have three for sure. I'm not 
not a hundred percent on the um, full funding and alignment for state land use initiatives. So I just want to make sure we're making everything possible we can for water. What about the transportation safety enhancement? <coughs> and what are you thinking on that, Brian? I mean. I mean, that's more up for like Portland area, right? For the well, you know, it talks about the speed. Personally, I think this road down here should be a 55 mile an hour speed. It isn't, but uh, yeah. you know, I think that 45 is enough. And after we get done with all this, I'm going to talk to you about some stuff that I talked to. Um, the 20 is plenty program and what they've been doing to slow people down in their community and the fact that you don't have to have the county on your side because if you buy your own signs and put your own signs on private property they can't say a word about it and there's a lot of different signs you know slow down this is a 25 blind driveway kids at play out here on the park. The problem is, how are you going to enforce it? Right? If you, you don't know, have a county You know, but, you know, when I go into a neighborhood and I see these signs that say 20 is plenty, I slow down. Mm -hmm. Now, you're always going to have those lawbreakers. Um, the other morning coming out of here at 6 o'clock in the morning, there was three race cars, no more than a foot from each other, coming up through Sodaville. And I damn near pulled out in front of them. They was going over 100 miles an hour. Right. And for the people that care about the community. So this transportation safety, it really looks at first blush that it's more like for cameras in Portland. I'm not really sure yeah, how that's that would be. Yeah, for light rail and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. That's it here at the parking lot. I see cars constantly doing 15, 60. Mm -hmm. They'll even come off the hill here, go through the stop site, and go on down the hill. You know, up at the top of the hill where you can go on that old lot. Yeah. 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 thing is, too, it's more for the big cities, the process, you know, security and, and stuff like that that we don't even have a say or... Mm -hmm. you know, I've just about gotten a fight with him trying to get him to slow down. Oh, yeah. We caught the guy on the uh, three-wheeler. I come by every morning at 10 and five. We're going to get an off and off. Okay. So yeah. 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 This could be a long meeting. So we have three for sure. We have some other possibilities. Let's um, look at water again. So. They need to be. Well, you said we don't have to now, right? Well, because you're doing we can do it. Yeah, we could do instead is just say, you know what, we don't want to do this. We just want to sign the letter that they sent. But the letter hasn't been written yet. So. I, I think we need to make our choices and then voice that we're not happy with the choices that we were yeah. afforded. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, water utility rate and fund assistance. So, the state created a uh, low-income household water assistance program, um, but they ran out of money, so they want to get more money for it and continue that, so that would be... And we haven't to that. date had anybody use, is that the program that you're talking about? Uh, we have that's the Community form? Services Consortium. Okay, that's different. Uh, but this is another state one rather than the, the local one, so um, they basically what they did was they created it last year and then it ran out of money, so they want to get it funded again so that other people around the state can use it. Would that help us, though? I mean, that need to be... Sure. As long as we tell people it's there and we start getting money. Um. Yeah, I can see where that one could be beneficial. It's clean. What's that? It's clean. Mm -hmm. 
explain. Oh, explain why I think it's yeah. beneficial. I mean, because we have had some hardship cases around here where people have gone, you know, use more water than they're capable of paying for. Mm -hmm. You know, so instead of us being extended out for a year or two to try to get payment back or from them, them we might be able, or turning them off, be able to uh, pull from those resources to get paid. Okay. So I. What about cybersecurity? I mean, that's huge if, um, as far as being hacked and stuff. And a lot of cities have been hacked already, and I think we had to actually add that insurance, didn't we, with CIS? We did, yeah. So, I mean, I think cybersecurity, sadly, is huge. I haven't read it really well enough to know if that's something, but what about something with cybersecurity? Well, we're already covered yeah. by the insurance, right? Uh, yes, so the idea would be to find additional money for us to do more cybersecurity. It's a uh, it's a funding proposal. So, getting state funding to figure out what problems local governments have with cybersecurity, and then just giving us a check every year to address those things. Because I think what we have now is uh, insurance. Oops, if we get caught, it'd be nice if we had something to be a little bit more proactive. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with more money. Yeah. I mean, do we need to add fiber firewalls and stuff to? To our systems. I mean, we don't have any servers or anything like that, right? I mean, we have individual computers. You can hack, the, but they go on the internet. Once you go on the internet, you're exposed. Well, you are, but I mean, it's really hard to control unless, like, say, you start putting some firewalls into the and system VPNs to start, yeah, we, use VPNs. I mean, we have so, I mean, is that really necessary for for our stuff? I'm just. I mean, you're the one that deals with it on a daily basis. You, yeah. you have dealt with it, and I don't know I mean, how hard it is to rebuild our systems. I mean, if somebody comes up and say, you know, ransomware, Alex, you got to pay fifty thousand dollars to get your stuff back, right? And you so, say, eh, well, I got a thumb drive. It wouldn't even <laughs> do that. They could take our accounts out. Exactly. Yeah. They could wipe us dry. So with that, so with that, can that be extended to cameras that are ran? over the internet for cameras at the park for security. That's what I would like to see. Yeah. I mean, if they're going to put a hotspot out here yeah. and we're capable of using wireless, you know, in the general yeah. area, there's yeah. a way yeah. that we can get some... fall under there, because it is yeah. technically security if it's stored. <coughs> I'm assuming there would be, like, cloud storage or something that would be keeping the videos running. Yeah, right. if we want to purchase VPNs to run security cameras through. So this would help cover that? Yeah. I mean, Everybody's yeah. getting their own. Make a case. Sometimes they're hyper specific and sometimes they're hyper vague. We got $65,000 for community well assistance and we bought a bunch of radio water meters. So. Right. It worked. Our wells are right. doing well. Well, yeah. I guess we can put that and on there. Okay. Like you say, that is a concern. Awesome. So, would we say that yes on that for number four? Yeah. Okay, so we have one more left. We have water, alcohol, wildfires, land use planning, and cybersecurity. That's five. That's five. Okay. Oh, we didn't cite on the land use, though, did we? Oh, okay. So, like, for example, our comprehensive plan is in bad needs of revision. Right now, I'm supposed to be building a motocross course. Um, and, and a horse arena, right? Yeah, a rodeo arena and a television production studio and all sorts of goodies. Um, I don't think we're ever going to do that, so we should probably take it off our official planning list. Um, so right now, if you want to redo your comprehensive plan, it would cost a lot of money because it's going to take a lot of time. The idea here would be to find initiatives like comprehensive plan revisions or other land use planning. If you want to revisit our zoning ordinance, for example, and spend staff time on that. Um, right now, there are a lot of state regulations we have to follow. So the idea is to figure out what's costing local governments the most money and then tell the states, hey, stop doing that. <laughs> um, so that's the idea behind the... That's your, that's your thought process going through the rest of why it's uh, yeah. kind of So important. where is land yeah. use? I'm sorry. sorry. Which one? I had a hard time finding it too, but it's on the so it's page two. Page two. Oh, yeah. that makes it easy. Page two right there at the top. Okay. The idea is to also make, in, in line with that, they also want the state to have a, an easier time of following their own process so they're better able to work with us once we go through a land use and have to get help from them. Okay. I'm good with that. Being one of the everybody yeah. good with those? Yeah. But we still want to do a yeah. letter. Yeah, we can do that. Once it's written, I'll bring it to you. Yeah. Okay. Play the game, but tell me so, you don't like it. So, 
better for rural areas instead of metropolitan areas. Yeah, we can too. All right, so the the suggested motion there is uh, the end of that section in the packet. I move to designate this. No. Yeah, to yes. designate the city recorder. Oh, see, it's not in italics. So that's what really confused me. I move to designate the city recorder to submit the city's legislative priorities both to the League of Ordinances. Second on that. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Now, must be city property taxes. Yeah. So we uh, we discussed that with uh, one of the property owners in question uh, this year. We just wanted to give an update about the city property tax fiasco debacle. Mm -hmm. Uh, previous administrative deficiency. Uh, yeah, so Roger went to the county, and the county's like, yeah, we can't take it off. Also, one of the houses was sold. Didn't end up getting recording, so it's actually still in our name. Uh, so, yeah, four, seat, four properties are the little piece that goes down over the hill there. We used to dump the stuff out of the brush out of the city over there. The park over next door, the store building, and the lot behind it are separate lots, and the third and the fourth lot is the house that was sold at the Browns. And there's still, there's back taxes in 2014, and they've been collecting interest each year for the back taxes, and now the taxes are worth, are, co are more than the, the property taxes to pay in would worth. So we got a foreclosure notice, and they, they told me that they've been sending us a notice since 2014, the city notice since 2014, Send the city owe those taxes, but I've been here all the time. I've never seen this come to the on, on the table, and they say that they they won't forgive it. They won't they won't foreclose on the city property, so we can just keep letting this interest queue for for, the, for eternity. But we don't own the property. <laughs> well, we do own the, the, the three of us. Oh, yeah, and we can let that interest keep accruing forever. And, the only time they'll come back on us if we go to sell our properties, which we aren't never going to do. But we have sold one to Anthony, and so we got to figure out what to do with that situation. But Anthony does it's something we did. Somebody needs to yeah, go. Anthony, yeah, Anthony Anthony needs to go, I need to go find do that. some talking, yes. boy, because I don't yeah. know how that when recorded. I, I saw, saw that, you know, I went to the county thinking maybe they just let us pay the taxes and not pay the interest so we could just, you know, make the bill right. and. So they would have to keep sending us pay paperwork every year. I said, no, just go ahead and don't pay taxes. Or you keep sending a bill every year and you just throw it in the garbage can round file and keep accruing this interest forever. When did we uh, sell that to you, Anthony? When did the city sell that to you? I don't know. I have to go pull the paperwork and all that. Have they received any tax notices on their on their bill? I'm just curious. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if not, didn't that throw up a flag as to, hey, how come I'm not getting a bill on my property taxes in November, like everybody else, right? When did you start the park? So when did you start the park? Now I'm not sure. I can't remember either. I've been here so long. It's all the days when I get I slept since then when I've done this. It's been about five or six years, right? Because yeah. I remember. I mean, I, I, I mean, was working on it pretty heavily at the time. The, the letter we got from the county said that the taxes have been been have been delinquent since 2014. Well, that's more than... Well, long as we've had the properties, I believe. As long as the Habitat had the properties. So I think it's probably... Eight years? Yeah. So I think it's probably been Rolf Stearns had the properties and sold it and traded to our Habitat. Yeah. And it's been changed since then. So they changed hands twice since the taxes have been starting to do good to make those properties. That's just crazy that it's your property. And I, I would be freaking if I were you right now. Yes, you there tomorrow. <laughs> going, hello. Yeah. yeah, I was kind of bewildered when I went to talk to him in the county. They said that. And I said, this is not good. Yeah. I That's mean, not good. yeah. Aren't you glad you came tonight? So I guess um, what? Aren't you glad you came tonight? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, what are we, what are we proposing? I mean, what are you asking them? Because, I, I mean, we got to pay our taxes, too, right, on the property. I mean, we no, eventually... No, the city don't have to unless you sell the properties. They say they will not come back on us until... So, the gal over there... The tax you don't have to make it right? No, well, the gal at the tax office says not to. Yeah, just the, the thing about it is the potential liability of it. Right now, there's a state law that says 
they can't make us pay. The state could change that law, and suddenly we have to pay. Yeah, I was going to say, can't they throw a lien on it? Grand, grand <laughs> well, they can't because we're a government actions. agency. Uh, but that law could be changed, so they could throw a lien on it. Mm. But doesn't that make anybody feel guilty for not paying taxes on a piece of city property? Well, that's that's why I went and talked to them, see if there's some way we could make it right without having to pay all this back fees. They, 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 yeah, that's yeah. why I went over and talked to them. Yeah, we the total bill is 2500 since 2014, the principal plus the interest, um, and it's just going to keep accruing. That's until not bad at all. I know what he said. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's something we can budget yes. for next year, right? If we wanted to. I personally think we should make it right. I, I, think know, I, would, right. I, would, I would feel better with it, you know, so we know that, you know, chaps with our chaps and Timbs never can sell these pieces of property. One down there is so really useless anyway. We just yeah. took it in the trade with Habitat. But right for what's our property. Yeah. You know, whatever we owe for what we have and. Yeah. And I would, boy, if it were me sitting there, I'd go to the recorder who, who did this, the loan people, unless you want. And what I, you know, I'm, what I'm, I'm, going, going, like, I'm not even sure who we went through when we did the trade. I'm going to go through everybody that I <laughs> <laughs> to get the house. Yeah, I mean, my thought on... what I can do to help you with yeah. that. But my thought on Anthony's property is if the city owned it and we had back tax back taxes on it before we sold it to them, we were responsible for up to that point. After that point, it should be the property owner's responsibility to pay for the taxes after that. So that's why I was asking when he took over the property, um, you know, what's going on. So, I mean, that's that's my view. I'd be rattling cages on the recorder because it should not have gone through. Nothing should have. Because, I mean, it's 2022, and I know we, I'm pretty sure we probably sold that in 2016, 2017. You shouldn't even be able to sell property without the back taxes. Exactly. That's, exactly. that's a good point, too. Property. So, yeah, I don't understand how the, well, well, the county does not just wipe basically. it off because it's part of their, their yeah, responsibility. They don't do that. Well. I mean, our, our county sold its own county shops one time for back taxes because they did. <laughs> they looked at it, a lot number and said this lot of them hasn't paid tax for 20 years. <clears throat> We're going to sell a property. They did that two times. Two years, but I mean, it's something that should have been so, disclosed yeah. to Anthony, right? You know, whenever he was buying the property, that hey, there's back taxes on yeah. it. And, yeah. I mean, that, anytime you go out and buy any property out there, I mean, they do yeah. a background, yeah. you yeah. know. I mean, I, yeah, Alex gets them all the time here. You know, people wanting to know if there's any liens on any properties, which yeah. is a back tax lien. Yeah, so. somehow this got the ball dropped, but it was from that office, that office right over there, that the ball got part of the ball got dropped. I, I think I don't like the idea of just hoping it goes away and ignoring it. That exactly. doesn't seem like yeah. a good idea. It's not ethical. Yeah. Um, but, so, but I want us to pay what is our part and what is reasonable. Yeah. And I think we should, like, say, keep it on the forefront and maybe budget it in for next year because the way I see it, they just hired 87,000 IRS <laughs> agents. and <laughs> <laughs> They're going to want to collect that $2,500 sooner or later. So. <laughs> And they're coming guns <laughs> blazing. I'm just saying. I used to tell you what they told the gal told me over there at the tax <laughs> office, and she was the one that, yeah. She said, Yeah, I've been sending one of these out every, every year since 2014 to the city. I said, This is the first time I've seen it. She said, but I've been, I've been uh, on the council for since 1981, and, and I was, I was a mayor twice since then, and yeah. still haven't seen it, you know, until Alex brought it up to me. I'm, Whoa, <laughs> this is really you know something about this. Like I, I, I don't want to talk to him, but I got the If it was 25000 like Joel said, it would be a, a, a bigger issue. But 2500 I think we need to try to pay it right before it does come 25000 yeah. 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 Another thing I might do is talk to the commissioners and see if they're willing to take some uh, yeah, pull rank and just squeegee yeah. it out. That would be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Once again, use your cloud. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll give them a call. They, they may be more strong arm them. Tax <laughs> Go packing in there. Uh, well, we don't do that. <laughs> they can't do it in the courtroom. Yeah, 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 I know. Throwing it. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got that pretty well. Take care. Yes, right. Yep. See that's what we can do, yeah. What we can do about making it right. Yeah, okay. And Next good thing. luck. Public comment. This is the time to speak to the city council or the mayor on any subject other than what it. Other than what is listed on the agenda, except for public hearings, time limit three minutes per person. Anyone have any comments? Yes, or questions? I've been patiently waiting, but I was reading the rules and 
I don't think I'm allowed to talk about it. It was on the agenda. Is that you know, we got to read that right? I know. We do whatever we want here anyway. But I've been didn't want to interrupt. <laughs> All right, so a couple things to top off. I like the idea of paying off twenty five hundred bucks. That's a drop in the bucket. Uh, you know, if it was thousands. Oh, I think we should big sale. Um, as we talked about, we went through, you guys did, the, head, the discussion on water. Um, the more that I thought about it over the last month, I don't like the idea of teaming up with Waterloo, build a treatment plant. If we were going to do that, why couldn't we borrow the, buy the farm field down there, put our own treatment plant right in our own city, instead of buying something from somebody else? It's just ideas off the top of my head. Um, so, it, okay. Let me finish. Um, I think we should exhaust all exhaust all our resources in the city spending money before we go into a multi-million dollar project that involves another town. Jackman Well, another well. Why can't we drill more wells? I know there's issues with stuff keeping up. But we're chucking in 200,000 gallons. We're using around 400 to 500 gallons. So our wells are, our wells are still producing 350 gallons a month even when we're trucking in 200 thousand if my math is right because it doesn't seem like our water usually stops when we're pulling in water so if we had another containment of like the one that they suggested for rays or even another one up on the hill i don't know how that works but like i think adding one more well we said the last 10 days or maybe 20 days we have like a 60 day it's basically july to september where we really need the water and i have a feeling things are going to be changing but we have enough water right now, we haven't had a truck any. So I don't know if this is an unusual circumstance or if this is like, there's a 30 year cycle on weather, earth tilt, da 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 da, um, that could play a part into it. And so I think investing into our city water system is the most beneficial thing. And how do we do that? I don't know. Like Jeff said, have a plan A and plan B. But I think, I mean, to build a thing in Waterloo to come here, I mean, we're talking about 20 million, 25, no, not that much? No, it won't be that much. But just, you know, I mean, that's a lot of, I mean, still, I mean, even to get that project going, we're talking, what, 10 year program? But to your, you know, to your point, to kind of answer some of your point, yeah. you know, okay, some, was, of the, was, some of the stuff yeah. that's been brought up in the past is, one of the reasons why we'd want to, you know, kind of position it over towards Waterloo is because it, you know, it's next to the river going through there, the water table is a different water table than what we have here in the city, yeah. right? So that's why we're open to the idea of doing it towards Waterloo instead of trying to do it on our own land, right? Um, I mean, what we're trying to do is get the study down here and get a comprehensive study that we can all understand as to whether or not it's going to be able to sustain us for a while if we do put something in here. And if it is, I mean, if it's capable of doing it and we do need a treatment, which right now we don't need a, a treatment plant, if all we need is a well to get it up there, I mean, there's really no reason to put in the finances of, of adding a treatment plant or buying the extra land to do that, right? Yeah. We can do it from a well. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, those are the things that we're trying to consider right now. Is there a water table over there compared to our water table over here? Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'm going back to like what you said earlier is the heights of the wells. All our stuff's on the highest mountain in our little city. Yeah, that never makes sense. And to me. there's stuff down here, lower, you know, her well. Exactly. Rays. My neighbor supposedly Spring Street's named Spring Street because there's an aquifer yep. running underneath. Exactly. Underneath. And that. if we can tap into that, and we're so probably good. I'm just like, I think it's just we're stuck with everything on the hill, and I know we're being very open-minded with everything, but I just, I really want to pursue what can we do as our city. I do like, I do like the idea, but it's like, it just seems weird to quickly jump to, we're not quickly jumping, but like, to really oppose a what well, didn't come here, the water coming here when we haven't even exhausted all our resources. And if we have money to play with, I mean, I don't know what it is to have a pumper truck come in, but five, 10, 15 grand, that's a lot of money, but. 65,000 is what it cost us last time for the okay. test. That's, that's bigger than I thought. That's pretty good. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully it's not as much because we got, we got a reference and we got something to go off of this time, right? So. Yeah. And then last thing is like, uh, if we pursue any of that, testing these things in September, August, September, when we're at our lowest point, lowest point, because that I think that would be the most accurate way to determine water. 
As long as I'm on this council, <laughs> I'm going to try very, very hard to keep our resources in, in town. And the reason being is, from what I stated earlier, it's our biggest revenue resource. Yeah. It's it, it, it's what Sotoville is about. I mean, we were founded Sotoville for a reason, because of our water, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we need to maintain our independence in the water. And if we can do it and, you know, keep people supplied with it, we can't continue to truck water in. I mean, we've got to find another alternative. And if, if it's on Sotoville's land, I applaud it. I'm all, I'm all for it. But if, if there's other resources, then... Okay. I think bottom line is we have to have water. Yeah. It would be really ideal if we could keep it local. And I'm really heartened by this report that it even says there that the, that well was okay on an intermittent basis mm -hmm. and also that there is potentially money sitting in the bank waiting for it. That yeah. just makes me want to go dance and I don't dance well. <laughs> so that just, that's like, holy crap, cola. Let's do whatever we need to do. And if I ranking this, right, ranking this in my mind, I would put that to the top. Let's keep it local. Let's use what we have. Then we can nitpick later on whether we have a storage tank, if we have whatever that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I think let's just take this off the table or put it on the table and jump at it. But that testing the well is how we then kind of that even that more work yes. well. Yes. Yeah. But you know, this year we don't pump our water because this man over here can check water loss every day if you want yeah. Yeah. We haven't had that 2,000, 10,000, 40,000 gallon yeah, leaks church. like we have yeah. had yeah. in the past. No, no, no. And I, have, rain, the new I have a leak log if anytime anybody wants to see it. Yeah. Every time I, I mean, that's meters. phenomenal that we went to one point something from what we ate. Like, yeah, five, five, almost forty percent. It was almost forty percent <laughs> loss at one time. Yeah. Like, holy yeah, crap! Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just, I'm just pop yeah. The worst yeah. month in the last year was the last the church November of nineteen percent. Oh, nineteen. Yeah. Just bunch of wet. I yeah. thought it was thirty some odd percent. But yeah, so it, the new meters are helping us immensely. Well, that's like the start year. of the infrastructure, right? Like that. It is. Yeah. yeah. And that's something to, con you know, to consider before too long, too. The infrastructure is all getting old. It's yeah. about at 10 more years, and it's going to probably be crumbling. Great. Yeah. Time so it's the system was put in pretty cheaply yeah. when it was put in, because the company was going bankrupt by the time they got to the bottom but that road right up here, they were going yeah. bankrupt. They're on down the village. <laughs> they were putting in inferior in equipment, because they were going bankrupt. Because back when we put the water system in, back in 1980, you see we had an ordinance that you had to take the lowest bid, regardless whether it was good bid or bad bid or different. <laughs> if they bid it, and they were the lowest bid, you had to take their bids. And this year it did help because we did have record rain in you know in March, April, May. Uh, I mean, if you go back and look at the area, it was record rain for oh, three yeah. or four months in a row. And it rained all the way into June, which has really helped us this year. I mean, we really needed the help, too, because we were struggling trying to finance our... I don't think that's going to happen every year. It will not happen every year, but uh, fortunately it did this year, and, and hopefully it will for the next couple. So help us get back on our feet. I appreciate your, your feedback there. It's very valuable for me. Yes. That allows me to take these conversations to uh, other local government leaders and people in the legislature and Congress to remind them nobody wants to work with them. It's kind of a hard truth, but there's a... A, an emphasis on everybody in the community and everybody on this council and making sure we're using our resources before we expand out. Uh, so, yeah, I appreciate it. Every little bit you all say during these meetings is very helpful. Because the comment has come on, are you guys kind of agreeing on this? It sounded like the perception before was we were a bunch of cackling people not agreeing on anything as a group. And, you know, who wants to give us money and who wants to work with us if we can't agree ourselves on what we want exactly. to do? So when you weren't allowed to agree, that was the thing. Yeah. Right. I, I'm sorry that you were not. And that makes yeah. all the difference. Okay. Okay. Anyway, and, so well, any I, other can I, comments? Yeah. 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 You're going to three minutes. Go okay. I, <laughs> I agree with everything that Joseph just said. And, um, I would rather even, Brian, I would like to even look at investigating your wells you know, to be a part of. Right next to each other. Right. Both drilled in different depths. Okay. One of them, the water tastes really good. And the other well pumps like crazy. Okay. I've got a third well that's down at the bottom of my property. Okay, so that is, again, exhausting our resources before we go outside of the city. Exactly. And 
And then the only other thing I have, but this is a really awesome meeting, and I'm sorry I talked out of turn so many times. I do apologize, <laughs> but you captured my interest, and I just love this. And I won't be here next month because I'll be at Oktoberfest, and I would like as many possible. I know Adina is on next door, but I'd still like y'all to be on Spring Street because you have no idea where that soda bill goes, and it's crazy. So if anybody can go on next door, it's a great way for the citizens of Sodaville only on Spring Street, I know it's just called Spring Street, to communicate with one another. When you see things, tell each other, yeah. you know. I'm there. I'm there. Okay. I know you are. And, and I read your stuff all the time when you throw stuff out. But since you moved to Sodaville, I don't even see you anymore. But I thought they put the groups together. No, they did not. They and they them. won't. But I thought you could only belong to one group or another. Then go back to Spring Street. Because <laughs> <laughs> only you can do that. And only the people like Jesse Walker and, and you guys, if you're on Spring Street, will be on it. The people at the top of the hill of Spring Street will be on it. And it, it's just us here in the little village part. So probably a separate issue because I'd like to talk to you about why it didn't work. Because they told me all you had to do was say yes. I did say yes, and I can show you. But, yeah, I'm just saying, for those of you who can, please go on Spring Street on next door. So we can communicate a little better, us as citizens with council, when we're not here and we have an issue that we can need to talk about because you can send personal messages. You know, on those times that you guys have uh, We're not allowed to do that, are we? Have an open discussion like that? Um, Is yeah, that a conflict? I, I'm usually the one, like, I kind of take that, that role of putting out information and synthesizing public feedback. Somebody else's. could reach out to us and we could say... Talk to Alex. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, well, he puts I reminders don't. out at city council meeting on such and such day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, feel welcome to come. And what is it called? It's on next door. It's one word. It's, it's an, an app. app. It's a map for that. And go to Spring Street. Yeah. No, 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 get to the point where we got to go the Waterloo route. I guess I didn't hear anything. What's Waterloo's paying into this? Because you said that they're not going to be connected into it right away. Are we burdening the whole financial? Or that, that, that we got to talk, talk to well, the people about. If we right, just well, because Jeff brought up the point of you know, having to pay like rent or lease of the property. Yeah. Would that be something that you would work out like, hey, you guys don't put any money in now, but you give us this property and we're paying you anything else. So we have covered that a bit here in at previous meetings. If we want to go ahead and adjourn, I can follow up with you okay. a little bit after this. Okay. So I just want to take a count report. I did ask Alex, um, when we've gone out, out and talked to people about we want more money, they're always like, well, what are you doing? And so we've talked we're about, well, we've got these water meters and we're talking. One of the things I asked Alex to do is to maybe pull up some numbers. I know that our water loss has plummeted, yay, but yeah. what about our bills? Um, all I have is my yes. bills to compare with. Are we having people with higher bills? Yes. Are they having lower bills? Are we having more people in the red that we're, we're going to have to turn off their water because they're not paying? Yes. Is there any impact with us that is favorable in the long run for us so we look like we're doing stuff mm -hmm. and what the impact is on this. So I've asked him to make Average water bills went up a little bit in the last couple of months. So this month they jumped an average of $20 per household. See, which is wow, funny because since you guys put those meters in, I've been about 25 30 bucks low every month since then. My water usage went Great. up last night. But it's still at forty five dollars. And that's with six kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, Twenty dollars lower. Shave, back shower. Yeah. 
Yeah, I don't want to right? I have another family I should introduce you to. So you can <laughs> some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to know too. You know, where are we as far as our people in the red? I remember when I was playing Alex, and we there was like contracts that we had with people yep. um, to pay back. Where are we with that? And I think we've talked about also yeah. we actually, group of when do we turn people off? I started auditing that this week so I okay. could get in. You know, there's there is a method to the madness. It starts off kind of coming to an organization in the state that it was one figure out where the money is we figure that out two figure out what the rules are I've got that figured out now we have to actually start enforcing the rules which all the ordinances are digitized all the policies are online for people to see I talked to the municipal court this week for like you know hey what do we do if and the first question was are your ordinances online please and I said yes <laughs> so that makes it easy for if we had just said sorry it's in a big book that would have made them mad but no, we're making everybody's lives easier. So cool. that's that's the progression. Awesome. Oh, thanks. So yeah, things are things are good. So this week we started auditing. Uh, you know who's in the red? I think I identified ten households that have some seriously overdue bills. Uh, so we're taking and care of that. Do we have the ordinance slash nuisance slash whatever on when we turn you off? I mean, yeah. water is vital. I yep. know there's rules, but by the same, nobody writes for free. Yeah, it's sixty-one you know? days if you haven't paid your bill. Then. You get a five-day notice to turn it off, and, and uh, the you notices know, cost you money. Yeah, and everything shutting it off costs you money. Turning it back on costs you money. You get late fees for everything. So, okay. yeah, I've, I've been compiling the the financial paperwork oh, cool. for everybody who's overdue, and we'll wow. make sure everybody pays the bills. So. You must have read my mind ahead of time. <laughs> right, right? I want I want data because yes. invariably we go out and they go, "How deep are your well?" I don't mm-hmm. freaking know. Oh. And so when they ask things like this, it would be nice to have. I write them down now. Just because so we need the hardship brain. bill back. Exactly. Yeah, right? oh. So uh, How my, we get paid? my dad likes to say, um, you know, Al Capone says if there's one gun in the room, make sure it's yours. If there are any numbers in the room, make sure they're yours. <laughs> exactly. Alex, where's my job description? Yeah. Uh, it is in the comprehensive plan, which is on the city ordinance website. And what's it called? The uh, Recreation Community Affairs Committee. Okay. And you said I have to have other people join it, at least five? Yeah, we'll probably want at least five. One outside, a teenager, a senior. Yep. Do I count as a senior? If you want. <laughs> well, I am. There you go. Four. Yeah, and then officially the school district superintendent. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, have a motion on the floor to adjourn. Who moved and who seconded? We haven't moved in yet. I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? None. Okay. Uh, Carries. Yay. Oh, beautiful. And.